back here at the Laz Golf Charity Foundation event, and we are here with the uh, founder of the Jordan Porco Foundation, Marissa Giornella Porco. How close was he? He was really good. That was okay. good. That was good. Um, <laughs> it's not an easy one. No. And Marissa, you know, you and I have talked a lot, and, and uh, I was at the dinner years ago with, with Renee Danino, and obviously, you know, suicide prevention is, is what you're all about now. Um, you lost your son um, years ago, but, uh, and I was telling you I lost my nephew a year ago. Um, but it, it's, 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 it's everywhere. It's prevalent in society everywhere. Uh, lately, this last week, just, you know, athletes in football. You know, one Chandler Jones uh, was, was going crazy. They put him in uh, a hospital for 72 hours, and then he was re released by the team. He's had issues for years and years. Um, you, were, you and I were talking about a lot of, uh, you know, um, head injury people. Yeah have had have some issues and always you know sometimes it leads to suicidal thoughts and things like that talk about the foundation getting money obviously from the laos La, the last charitable foundation helps you guys but um it, you know i was struck years ago about the message of how you're helping kids on uh, college campuses and uh you know one of my baseball players just went to c college he's 18 years old he went to lincoln university um uh, stay with them for a weekend because it's tough that first time you get away from home um you know there's a lot of separation issues and things like that talk about what your foundation is doing to try to help kids high school college uh level and in a lot of these wellness things that you do for them i think is fascinating oh thank you um so the the signature program of the jordan porco foundation is called fresh check day and as you know my yep. son we lost our son in um he was a freshman in college back in 2011. So we're almost going on 13 years, you know. So I sent him off to his first choice college with his buddies and six months later. And what we developed was a platform and um, an interactive mental health fair with a m suicide prevention messaging that was really, we weren't talking about this stuff 12 years ago, right? To really let kids know there's hope. You're not, you're not whatever you're feeling, whatever you're experiencing, you're not alone. There's resources on campus, right? So we make this Fresh Check Day is this uplifting, engaging event with like incentives for participation, right? Kids like giveaways. I love their T-shirts. I love food. They love therapy dogs. So we make it's peer peer to peer. So they're talking to other students on campus. You know, one of the things that I said is like they don't want to hear somebody my age lecturing them and talking to them about this. They want to hear it from their peers, and so you can have some heavy conversations and feel heard and feel hopeful. And so from that first time when we had our first fresh check day at Eastern Connecticut State University in 2012, a year after my son died, we have grown to 46 states, over 370 oh colleges. God. That's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. amazing. And, um, I can't remember the other number, but we are tradition on many campuses. 80% of our campuses come back year after year. And fresh check day is a tradition on campus for most colleges. And especially like at UConn, it's spring weekend. Remember spring weekend used to be kind of chaotic, right? Now they have a fresh check day every weekend. And we know that this program is saving lives because people are getting screened for depression. They might be getting screened for a substance disorder. They are talking to the people at the counseling center, right? So there's a real face behind that door and it maybe feel, might feel a little bit less intimidating to go and ask for help. They're learning about alternative coping skills other than just partying on campus, right? Right. Healthy coping skills. And they're connecting with other stu students and learning that they're not alone in what their struggles are. And so that really is the heart of Fresh Check Day, and I think that's why it works. Um, and so we're really, and we, we've been just um, designated as a best practice by the Suicide Prevention Resource Center that's funded by SAMHSA. So we're really very proud of that accomplishment um, because we've known in our heart and our data always represents that yes, we are saving lives, we are doing what the stated mission is, but the feedback that we get from the kids and from the colleges really kind of reinforces that. And so events like this really help us because we're a nonprofit, we're located in Wethersfield, Connecticut, but we have a national reach and a small, small but mighty staff <laughs> that helps put it all together. Talk about how where the money's going to go. I mean, you guys got fifteen thousand today yeah. from the Las Golf Foundation, um, and you guys have been a part of this for for years. But what does that money do for your guys' foundation? So it helps us with our general. We get we get some grants. A lot of our money comes from general donations and from uh, events like this. And so it really really helps us um, keep pushing the, the mission forward. 
and provide more and more Fresh Start Days across the country. It also, also helps us support our middle and high school program. We have a psychological resilience program for kids regardless of setting. Anybody who wants to open up a conversation about mental health with middle school and high school kids can do it. It could be in a sports it could be an after-school program. It could be a summer camp program. It could be a church program. But I think, you know, from our perspective, we do primary upstream prevention. We want to get in front of the problem before it becomes a crisis. Right. But we also want our kids to know that there's trusted adults that they can go to. You know, they need to be able to know who, who are their people in their community that they can reach out to if they're struggling with something or if they know their friends are struggling with something. So that's really kind of the, the core of what we do is really opening up those conversations, reducing the, the stigma and the discrimination about help seeking. Because even though we're talking about it so much more and it's in the news, right, and we know about celebrities and sports people that are dying by suicide but also struggling with their mental health. Oh, my health. God, every day there's an actor that just killed himself. He no. was like 35 years old. I and mean. so we need to let people know that you know yeah. there's strength in a asking for help. And I think that it's really important when you address this stuff when you're young. You know what I mean? You have those coping skills moving on because you can't really, you can't just bury this. You know, whatever you're struggling with when you're a young adult, it's going to come out at some point. And so I think that if we start normalizing mental health with physical health, you know what I mean? Let people right. know you wouldn't let a broken arm go for, no. for months, right? You go get attention. This is what we need to do. Well, and, I, and listen, I worked with Junior Seau uh, when I was working out west. Had no idea, and a lot of people had no idea that, that he was battling all these head injuries and all these, these dark thoughts and things like that until it was too late. And a lot of these guys have donated their brains for the CTE research yep. and stuff because they, they like felt they couldn't battle this any longer. You know, but they wanted someone to, to uh, be helped by their death. And, you know, it's, it's, I'm sure it was shocking to a lot of people the way they were, they were taking their own lives. I think Dave Dorson uh, did it. The other, the wa Ricky Waters, uh, the running back from the Eagles did it, um, you know, where, where they, didn't, they took their li life in such a way that at least their brain survived yeah. to, to, to be donated because they were like, listen, I, I, I can't stop this anymore. I mean, right. you know, what you're doing to me, like you said, is preventative. Because I, I just, every day, I read more about, you know, this girl was a straight-A student. She was a yeah. soccer star and all of this stuff. And then all of a sudden, she took her own life. And it's like, you know, I, I do feel with my older children when they went to college, the stress that they felt, yeah. you know. And, and as, a, as when I was growing up, um, my stress was more um, inward about my insecurities, my looks, my grades, how I played, things like that. Um, and, and like you said, a lot of times, I, I couldn't go to my parents. I, I was lucky I had siblings, and I could go to them because they were older and, and discuss yeah. this kind of stuff. And, and I, I understand totally what you're saying. My 12-year-old, my she's not going to confide in me. There's no way. You know, it's like, a lot, it's like a lot of times I'm asked to leave the room when she's talking to my wife. Yeah. And it's like, so I, I can't imagine what kids are going through today, the social media. They're, yeah. they're inundated with stressful things from other kids and stuff like that. Um, I, I just think what you're doing is amazing. God bless you. I think that the environment that we all grew up with and we knew life was stressful and we were trying to, you know, become an adult, right? But right. now, 24-hour news cycle, right? Kids can't get away from the bad stuff that's happening all over the world. Back then, we didn't know if there was something happening. In, that's right. Even in another state. Like, you know, so I think that, that puts a lot of stress and anxiety on kids and they can't get off it. And I also think it's also being used a tool to hurt people. And like we talked about earlier, you wouldn't, I think the bullying that happens through our social media channels is so hurtful and we would say and I think people say things to other people they wouldn't say oh absolutely person. and so it's because like there's no there. retribution if I'm right. sitting at home on my my smartphone I don't ever have to you don't ever ever get to see my face right I'm just I'm just a writing online right and so yeah I think that I think it, and as I said you know we say this all the time it takes a village it takes all of absolutely. us absolutely takes grassroots organizations it takes people like you coaching kids and it takes it takes everybody in the community to really pay attention to this it's a public health crisis all day long all over the world not just unique to the United States and so oh, no. it takes everybody it's like 20, 22 military people are killing themselves every day right. the military I, it, it blows my mind yeah you and know that's a tra it's such a tragedy it is a tragedy it's such a tragedy so we we we've all, we've all, we're all in this together really and we and it's we've got a long road ahead of us and again we appreciate people supporting the work that we're doing and the work that a, a lot of people are doing how can they donate prevention. how can they just send so donations the jordan porco foundation.org there's a, a portal online there to make a donation um, if anybody wants to volunteer reach out 
we have our freshcheckday.com website and our forwards. Now we have plenty of presence on social media and, um, you know, follow us, call us if you want to get involved in any way. Um, I re- saw this really cool thing online just recently about depression and Winnie the Pooh and oh, yeah. how they wrote in Eeyore is the most depressed character in all of fiction and yeah. the way his friends had treated him through the years. It wasn't of trying to shun him or keep him out of things. Winnie the Pooh and Teddy Ruxpin used to bring him to all the birthday parties, yeah. make sure that he comes to everything that they do. Right. They know he's not going to like it. They know that he's going to have a bad time, but they're going to continue yeah. to include him. <laughs> um, is that kind of the way we should start yes. treating people with depression instead of putting them in a the corner exactly. and say, suck it up, oh, yeah. 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 come to me when, you, when you're feeling better? you got to reach out to these people. Whether people are struggling with anxiety or depression or any anything else, it's like, these are invisible illnesses, right? Right. And not, and even when you talked about the the student that's a great athlete and is getting straight A's, I mean, there's they, there could be masking some depression or anxiety. There's that effortless perfectionism that we feel like our social media, we have to look great, we have to be great, we have to be overachieving, and we could be struggling inside, right? So I think we need to be open and kind of hold space for people who are struggling because at any point in time, that could be any of us. Absolutely. Right, or any one of our kids. Correct. You know, it's never just we're going to point at, oh, this only happens in that family. It's It happens to all of us and maybe at different life stages. So, yes, holding space for people, including people, sitting with people who are struggling. Those things are important. I know it's always a heavy topic for you, no matter what, yeah. and you're uh, so gracious to even talk Absolutely. about well, it uh, you, with all you. of I us. I kind of put you on the spot, and I apologize. No, 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 no. <laughs> did you have fun today, though? Like yes, this I event did. This is, is a great full fun. of smi- smiling oh, people, yeah. and we have so much fun. Great supporters. This is fun. This is like makes me want to play golf. I don't know. You know, <laughs> it's a great event. Did Thank you ever you so think much. it would get this big, though, with the colleges and stuff? And I. Can't nationally i can't believe we had this great kitchen table conversation we had a concept we gave it a shot and next thing you know and by 2015 we were national so yeah it blows my mind it really and we have we have like brand recognition you know like yeah. i'm not even a market i'm a social worker i'm not a marketing person but the fact that people can say i went to that fr- i went to the fresh check day at that college i know about that it it, it kind of it warms my heart you know you're doing great thanks from a sad place but it, i know i'm happy doing it's great things. But great wrong. things came out of it. Thank yeah. you, Marissa. Thank you so much. All right, we'll take a quick break. We'll come back. We're still here at the uh, Last Charity Golf Foundation event. We'll be right back from Tunks's Plantation.